Hello, ladies and gentlemen. A huge welcome back to everyone for this special weekend edition of Markets Around the World. My name is K2, and as usual, we'll be covering everything from the latest data and macro news stories to the key levels you need to be watching. If you love markets like we do, remember to subscribe and help better educate yourself about how these markets actually work together. So, let's talk about what happened in the market and the outlook for what's to come. Let's expand the conversation by starting with the news. Apple is facing questions about its future as it heads into the Worldwide Developers Conference, WWDC, next month with a stock price down for the year. Concerns include its AI competitiveness, regulatory pressures, and recent missteps like a controversial iPad ad. Revenue has fallen in five of the last six quarters, and the company faces an antitrust lawsuit from the U.S. Department of Justice and several states. Apple's shares are down 1.4% this year, lagging behind the S&P 500's 11% rise. Expectations are high for CEO Tim Cook to showcase AI advancements at WWDC. A potential partnership with OpenAI could help, but also highlights Apple's lag in AI development. Since Tim Cook took over in 2011, Apple has introduced only two major new products, the Apple Watch and the Vision Pro headset. The Apple Watch has been successful, but the Vision Pro is still new and expensive at $3,419.9. Next news, we are going to talk about it. Is the economy headed in the right direction? Wall Street investors think so, as U.S. stocks hit a record high this week. Why the optimism? Inflation didn't worsen in April after a surge earlier in the year. Additionally, Americans spent less at retail stores, suggesting the economy might be cooling. A cooler economy, while typically negative, might help lower inflation by reducing consumer demand and prompting businesses to freeze or lower prices. This could help the Fed achieve its 2% inflation goal. However, April's retail sales were flat and revised lower for the previous two months. Some economists believe consumers are maxing out on credit and now rely solely on their weekly paychecks, with savings down and no more pandemic-era stimulus. Early Friday futures indicate little change in stocks after easing from record highs. The cautious tone may be due to a lack of immediate catalysts, with the April CPI report passed and minimal upcoming data releases. Attention remains on NVIDIA, reporting earnings on May 27. Concerns linger over NVIDIA's valuation and the pace of its rally, with billionaire investor Stanley Druckenmiller trimming his holding. City analysts note that long positions in U.S. tech shares are nearing multi-year lows. Yovanel expects big tech sectors to regain leadership in the stock market. She notes that the drivers behind the early April pullback differ from those leading stocks lower now. The rebound has been broader this time. Among the sectors containing members of the Magnificent Seven, consumer discretionary has been underwhelming, while information technology has outperformed the market since its recent trough, but is only back to April levels, and communication services has recently underperformed the S&P 500. The Dow Jones Industrial Average briefly surpassed the milestone of 40,000 on Thursday, before closing slightly below it. While this marks a significant achievement, it primarily indicates the ongoing bullish trend in the stock market since late 2022. Walmart's earnings report on Thursday provided positive news, with better-than-expected results and raised sales guidance. This suggests that consumer spending remains robust despite recent interest rate hikes. However, there are concerns about weakening consumer confidence, as indicated by the latest University of Michigan survey. While Walmart's success is noteworthy, there are indications that wealthier customers are gravitating towards discount retailers, potentially dampening overall consumer spending. On the bright side, a slowdown in spending might be welcomed by the Federal Reserve, as it could ease concerns about inflation. Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester expressed confidence in the current monetary policy stance. While reaching the 40,000 milestone is significant, it also signals potential vulnerability in the market, possibly hinting at an impending pullback. Summary of U.S. April CPI report. Much to Fed Chairman Jerome Powell's satisfaction, CPI comes in cooler than expected. U.S. CPI rose 0.3% on the month, below estimates of 0.4%. Headline CPI inflation increased 3.4% year-over-year. 
matching expectations and slowing from 3.5% in March. U.S. core CPI rose 0.3% month over month, meeting estimates. Headline core CPI was up 3.6% year over year, decelerating from 3.8% in March, the lowest since April 2021. Instant reaction. Stock futures rally, U.S. dollar tumbles, and bond yields drop. Key takeaway. The April CPI inflation report may give the Fed confidence to consider rate cuts in the future. However, it may take several more soft inflation prints before the Fed is ready to take action. Currently, the Fed remains in a holding pattern as they await further data to make decisions. Let's expand the conversation and see some data together we will begin with. According to the April Conference Board CEO Confidence Survey, the majority of U.S. CEOs expect the Fed to cut rates just once this year. Out of 136 CEOs surveyed, 31% do not expect any rate cuts, while 26% project two cuts. Meanwhile, markets are pricing in just two rate cuts this year as a base case, with the first cut expected in September. Market expectations have fluctuated significantly, from pricing in six rate cuts down to one and back up to two in just four months. Zero DTE options now account for approximately 50% of options volume in the entire S&P 500. Zero DTE stands for zero days to expiration options, which are very risky and volatile as they expire on the day they are traded. The share of zero DTE volume in the S&P 500 has doubled in just two years. The growth in popularity of these trading products has also exaggerated intraday moves in the stock market. Meanwhile, meme stocks are making a comeback, with GameStop up over 150% in three weeks. Risk appetite is higher than ever. U.S. consumer sentiment has just dropped to its lowest level since November 2023. The Consumer Sentiment Index fell from 77.2 in April to 67.4 in May, well below expectations. Americans' expectations about the economy, personal finances, business, and buying conditions have also plummeted to a six-month low. Meanwhile, Consumers anticipate year-ahead inflation to rise to 3.5%, the highest reading since November 2023. Consumers are feeling the pain of inflation. Auto loans' serious delinquency rates surged to 2.8% in Q1 2024, the highest level since 2010. 90-plus-day delinquencies have been rising at a pace last seen during the 2008 financial crisis. Auto loans held by U.S. households jumped by $9 billion in Q1 to one toward $62 trillion, an all-time high. This means $45 billion of consumers' auto loans are on the brink of default. Meanwhile, car insurance inflation jumped to 22.6% in April, the largest one-year increase since the 1970s. U.S. households are missing loan payments as if a recession is here. Commodity prices have surged to their highest level in 13 months. The Bloomberg Commodity Spot Index, which tracks 24 energy, metal, and agricultural commodities, is up by 9% year-to-date. Since February, the index has risen by 11%, primarily driven by global demand and supply disruptions. Copper prices alone have jumped by 31% this year, and oil prices by 11%. Commodity prices continue to add pressure to the Fed's fight against inflation. Supply-side inflation remains a major issue. The last data I want to show you guys is Supercore inflation CPI jumped again in April to 4.9%, the highest in 12 months. Core services, excluding housing inflation, is a key metric followed by the Fed, also known as Supercore inflation. Last month's surge has been largely due to a 22.6% spike in auto insurance, contributing 2.3% to the jump in Supercore. Supercore CPI has now been above the Fed's 2% target for over three years. Yet another sign that key inflation metrics are back on the rise. The fight against inflation is far from over. All right, let's expand the conversation and see the S&P 500 stock's weekly performance. We begin with AMD plus 8.3%, Walmart plus 6.9%, Palo Alto Networks plus 6.9%, Intel Corporation plus 6.6%, Qualcomm plus 6.5%, Oracle plus 5.9%, Tesla C plus 5.3%, Alphabet, Google, plus 4.1%, Lululemon Athletica, 5.1%, FedEx, 3.2%, The Walt Disney, 2.4%, General Electric, GE, 2.2%, and the last one is Uber, 2%. It's possible that the fear and greed index could experience further shifts, 
especially in response to significant events like NVIDIA's earnings. If NVIDIA's earnings exceed expectations or provide positive guidance, it could fuel investor optimism and potentially push the index further into greed territory. Conversely, disappointing earnings could lead to caution and possibly a shift back towards fear. Overall, the Fear and Greed Index reflects market sentiment, which can be influenced by various factors including corporate earnings reports. I believe this is the last earnings week, and there are no more important earnings. As always, these are the ones I'm considering to play or watch the most. The most important one that everyone will be watching is NVIDIA. If you need to take a screenshot, please pause the video so you can use it for later on. Let's take a look at some charts and wrap up the video. We began with the SPY 4-hour chart. If the price breaks above 530, it's a win for the bulls and the price can go higher. On the other hand, if the price breaks below 524, the next downside targets will be 5 and 17 and 512. Let's take a look at the QQQ 4-hour chart. What's going on here? If the price goes above 454, the market remains bullish. However, if the price breaks below 449, we could see some downside with the next targets being 443 and 435. These are the news and key events for this week. On Monday and Tuesday, a bunch of Fed officials will be speaking. Then, on Wednesday, May 22nd, we have existing home sales and the FOMC meetings. On Thursday, we'll see manufacturing PMI and service PMI. Finally, on Friday, there are no important news events. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all for this week's video. If you found value in this video, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye for now.